Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Unity Church of Sun Lakes. We have a special treat for you today. Today we have uh, our musicians today, Point of Light, and that is Heather, Baby Lynn, Cerise, and Vicki. They've been together for over 11 years, and uh, my gosh, we met back in, um, I don't know, 10 years ago, maybe something like that, and kind of started off at the same time as the Yaya's and Point of Light. So, um, yeah, very, very special friends. They have been uh, guests at Agape, at Michael Beckwith's tr uh, church. So I'm always like, oh my God, they're just fabulous. So help me welcome Point of Light. There is more than enough in a universe that you created. There is more than enough on a planet of sacred design. There is more than enough for humanity.
Thank you so much. What a treat. Yummy, yummy, yummy. We have some newcomers here today, and I've asked them to introduce themselves. So I'm going to begin with Judy. I'm Judy Adams, and I live down in Sunbird for maybe 15, 20 years now. I know Jeannie from Unity of Mesa, and I've thought about coming to visit you all many times, and it's just such a long drive, but I made it this morning, and, and it's a perfect morning to be here. And Lori lives in Sunbird as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Jimmy Aaron. I used to, to come here up until about four years ago and then I moved to Phoenix and I came down here today to visit my friend Diane Kugel and she invited me to come here and I guess that's about it. Uh, blessings to everybody. So let's say our welcoming statement to everyone. We love you, we bless you, and we welcome you. Awesome. And now our opening prayer will be led by Reverend Juliet Bristow. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful morning? And it turns out to be a beautiful, beautiful day. How about that? Yeah. Okay, take a taste. Nice deep breath. We just remind ourselves that we can't breathe, really. And we just tap into that wonderful, wonderful heart of ours. And it's a song. Was what I was hearing with the song is that it's heaven on earth. Heaven right here, right now, in our hearts. We carry it wherever we could be. And to those that we see along our walks, we see heaven on earth in them also. So let's see that. Oh, so many have come this morning. And there are yet more to come. We know this. We know this in our hearts and in that heaven on earth. There is a place. There is a place for everyone to find their heart open. To find their heart and their breath and their love. And as it is this day, every day, Every moment to ourselves we say, this is heaven on earth. We see our children, our neighbors, ah, oh, they're sharing this. They're in this heaven on earth also. And we welcome those that come in whatever way that they come to this place, this place of love, welcome, heaven on earth, we say to them. And in our hearts, in our breath, it is almost like a chant, a mantra. We believe it, we know it to be so, and so it is. Thank you. to share this morning a prayer that was created by our prayer team for our church that we would, will say every Sunday probably at the end of the service but I wanted to introduce it now and uh, this is Julia Norton compiled this for us Unity Church of Sun Lakes is a beacon of love and light for all to see and feel as we are consciously aware that we are one with all beings, we welcome all with open hearts and open arms to express their divine potential. 
Everyone knows they are welcome to come together in oneness, in creating peace, and they know they can see the way to health and happiness in our church community. Divine order guides our church as it prospers and grows, as we provide love, hope, friendship, and healing to all. And so it is. Beautiful. Thank you. And now our daily word will be led by Reverend Maria Blanding. Divine order support, supports my life. Divine order is one of the great truths of life. It provides a foundation for all growth and a blueprint for all manifestation. Feeling stuck or bewildered is a sign that I am out of step with divine order. I pause and with compassion for myself, I release thoughts, worry, impatience, and doubt. I remind myself of times when I wondered whether a hoped result would ever happen, only to realize hindsight, in hindsight, that foundational aspects had yet to be in place. Remembering this helps me to be patient and trusting now. I affirm, I cooperate with divine order. It is established in my life now. I listen with mind and heart trusting that I will discern my path one step at a time. And trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. And that's from Proverbs 3, 5. And now we'll have another song from Point of Light leading us into our meditation, which will be led by Helen Daly. So after the song, I'll ask Helen you to come up and do the meditation.
today because really what is everybody thinking about we know we have love in our hearts but we want to send it around the world so close your eyes and just start breathing deeply but easily let your whole body fold into a sense of relaxation take in that breath so that your mind your conscious mind might actually feel a little foggy. And know that that's a good place to be. It helps you connect with everything when you're like that. Because everything around you is eliminated. And you're only thinking about what you can do, your power in this world. Just breathing deeply and easily. And let your, your spiritual self wake up to the possibilities within you and within the world by simply relaxing into them. Just relax and think of the world as the beauty you would like it to be. Whether you like the snow or the sun, the autumn leaves, just think of that as your beauty and sense the beauty that you can send outward to all those around you. Because the world is a beautiful place. And we want everybody to be able to share it. Just breathing deeply and easily paying attention to nothing that's going on around you, only your inner self. The beauty around you, maybe you hear the birds chirping. Just 
Hear the brook babbling. Oh, so peaceful. Just keeping your eyes closed and relaxing into all the sounds and that beauty. Maybe there's a little fawn drinking from your brook. Whatever you consider beauty in this world, just allow your body to sense it, to know that it is real and especially real for you. And as you're sensing all of this beauty around you, you're enveloped in a sense of peace. You feel a deep sense of peace within yourself. And within that peace, you can send healing everywhere, and especially throughout yourself. Just allow yourself to know, to believe that you are a beautiful person. And you are able to share that beauty and that sense of peace with the world. Just breathing so peacefully. So, so peacefully. Feel your own beauty. Know that it is always with you. And all you have to do is take a few deep breaths, closing your eyes, and desiring that you go to this place of peace and beauty. Just let it be. Let it be. And while you're in that place, Repeat something we say every Sunday and know that it is the truth and send it out worldwide. And that is, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. We say it often, but really believe it right now. Know that you are an instrument of that peace. Share that power worldwide. And as we go through the rest of our day, our days, that turn into weeks, that turn into months. Know that the world always needs this beauty and this power and share it with all you know. Remember, you are an instrument of beauty and peace. And take that wonderful feeling with you as you very slowly start to come back. Opening your eyes. Loving yourself. And the world. Everything just flows together, even though we didn't talk about what we were talking about today. <laughs> Let's affirm these unity principles together. We know that God, God is all there is. is.
One presence, one power, only one. Not two, not God and, only God. We are each an incarnation, a manifestation, an emanation of the one God. We are one with God. God lives and moves and has its being as me, as you. God creates through a universal process, which would be referred to as the law. And because we are each incarnations of God, so do we. We access and activate this universal law through our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, attitudes, values, actions, and words. And therefore, through our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, attitudes, values, actions, and words, we create our lives. Now we'll have one more song from Point Blank before our lesson.
we will create an av avenue for more to enter into. Love points the way, and law makes the way possible. At the universal macrocosmic level, this happens automatically. It is God's love that was the impetus for our world, and God's law that brought our world into being. God's love was the impetus, the force, or the energy, if you will, for you and me. And God's law brought you and me into being. But at the human level, love is not a given. It's not automatic. Well, it's our nature, it's our divine nature, but we've learned not to love. We've spent a lifetime building up walls to protect our heart. So when we wake up and we become conscious, it's our job let love point the way. We can turn it down. Our theme for today of celebrating the riches of life is a way to let love point the way. So what does it mean to celebrate? Of course, you and I both know what that word means. But I always like to look up words and see what Webster has to say about them. I was surprised to see the first two definitions. One, to perform a sacrament or solemnly, solemn ceremony publicly and with appropriate rites. And the second one was to honor, especially by solemn ceremonies. But that's not what I meant for today. A later definition is closer to observe a notable occasion with festivities. I like that one, but that's still not quite where I wanted to go today. So let me explain what I mean by sharing this cute little story. One Sunday, a visiting minister came to give a sermon about celebrating all the special moments and experiences in our lives. Big ones, small ones, notable ones, or otherwise. During the lengthy talk, 
He spoke of many things in his life that he had to celebrate, including his beautiful family, the blessings he received as a minister, his good health, a fine education, a reliable vehicle, and he went on and on. Then with a microphone in his hand, he began to move out into the audience, to the congregation, and ask congregants about the blessed moments they could celebrate. Sir, he cheerfully addressed one gentleman, can you tell us about a special moment in your life that you would like to celebrate right now? Yes, came the quick reply. The time I went to church and we had a short sermon. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my papa. <laughs> Gee, you don't need to talk for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not quite what I meant either, but you get my drift, right? <laughs> In my mind, celebrating is pausing, taking a moment or two or three to acknowledge and being grateful. Not so sure about us doing a happy dance, but it could happen in this group. <laughs> but with us, it could happen, I bet. It might, at the end of this service, it might just happen. And then we'll look at having a celebratory attitude throughout life to create greater and greater good. Because remember, love points the way and law makes the way possible. Since we've been focusing on wealth this month, I've been using this simple affirmation, infinite Abundance flows into my life all day, every day. And I don't just say it, I know it. So many wonderful things have happened to me just this month. And I've become so much more aware of the abundance that is already there that I just took for granted. From the smallest things to the biggest, it's like I'm seeing life in a whole new way. After Paul and Bettina's wedding last weekend, of which I had the privilege of officiating, I stopped and took the time to celebrate my shifts, my awarenesses, and the subsequent new experiences. I've, I've done five weddings in the past week. <laughs> And, you know, one was called last week. Can you do a wedding? Sure. <laughs> I've been surrounded by people who love each other. So how about some personal appreciation? How often do you stop and appreciate your amazing body? Your body temple that you were given with its five senses. How often do you celebrate your ability to see, and to hear, to taste, to touch, to smell? Maybe we never celebrate it. So right now, let us celebrate. Pause. We celebrate our ability to see and to look around right where you are at all the beautiful colors and images available. Not just celebrate your ability to see them with your physical eyes. How about celebrating your ability to see, to discern? To uncover, to understand a concept, to get something. I get it to gain insights and to have ahas. It's a wonderful feeling when that happens. So say it aloud with me, repeat after me. I celebrate my ability. I celebrate my ability to see with my outer and inner eyes. To see with my outer and inner eyes. Thank you, spirit. Thank you, spirit. Let us now celebrate our ability to hear. Not just sounds, 
but life all around you? And what about your ability to hear your inner voice? To listen to your higher self, which will never ever steer you wrong. Never. How often do you celebrate that? Well, here's your chance. Repeat after me. I celebrate my ability, I celebrate my ability to hear and to be guided. To hear and to be guided. Thank you, infinite presence. Thank you, infinite presence. Right now, let's celebrate your ability to taste. Not only when you are eating, but the ability to taste, to savor the richness of life. Repeat after me. Thank you, Mother, Father, God. Thank you, Mother, Father, God. For my ability to taste the wonders of life. For my ability to taste the wonders of life. Mm. You can smell right where you are. Just breathe it in. Take a deep breath right through your nose and celebrate your ability to smell and also your ability to discern when things are not right for you. Something smells fishy in here. Mm. Repeat after me. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. For the ability to smell and to discern. For the ability to smell and to discern. You can touch right now. Touch one another. Touch someone's hand if they're comfortable. And not just your ability to physically touch, but your ability to be touched and to touch another, heart to heart. I repeat after me, thank you, O oh great creator. Thank you, O oh great creator. For the ability to touch with my hands and with my heart. For the ability to touch with my hands and my heart. And then what about appreciating and celebrating our ability to think, to reason, to imagine, and to dream? Yeah. Repeat after me. Thank you, Essence. Thank you, Essence. Of all good. Of all good. For my mind. And yet sometimes it's our ability to think, to reason, to dream, and to imagine that can get us into trouble. <laughs> because we reason that the bad will only get worse, or we imagine catastrophes. We dream up the worst case scenario, and we think negative thoughts. We're human. And a lot of that is around financial issues sometimes, isn't it? Remember, the first two Sundays of the month when we took a look, a fresh look, at Jesus' words about the rich man getting into heaven and how they really have been misinterpreted and thus have promoted poverty thinking for a millennium. How they have led to a deep-seated belief in humankind, that we can't be spiritual and have wealth. Well, there's another passage that has done just as much damage, and I think it's a fundamental cause of where we often go in our minds around money. Can anyone take a shot at it? Hmm? Hmm? It's Paul's warning to Timothy. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. However, a closer study of the passage reveals why Paul spoke that way. Paul had put Timothy in charge of the early Christians' work at Ephesus, a center of learning and commerce. It was noted for its temple that had been built to worship the goddess Diana. I don't know who that is. 
In other words, the city of Ephesus was a city of idolatry and superstition. A city of general materialism that placed no emphasis upon God as a source of its supply. So Paul put Timothy in charge of this place. Thus, it's easy to see why Paul wrote to Timothy, warning him of these people's materialistic view of money. However, Paul also instructed Timothy in the same letter to preach to these material-minded people in this way. Charge them that they are rich in this present moment. That they would not be high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but on God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Paul was simply reminding Timothy that God is the source of our supply. And that Timothy was to instruct the rich among his followers about this eternal prosperity secret. Isn't it wonderful to get a new perspective on these ancient writings that have for a millennia had humankind in the grips of poverty consciousness? So let's get the second, let's get the record straight. There's nothing wrong with money in our wanting money. It is a God-given medium of exchange. And there's nothing evil about it. The moment we let go of those false ideas that someone ignorantly taught us years ago, we will find that money circulates in our financial affairs more and more easily and more satisfyingly. So now that we have this new perspective on financial good, let's move forward with some celebratory attitudes that make you a magnet for more good. We know we are vibrational beings and that we attract into our lives whatever resonates with our vibrational level. So if you guys will just follow me around and sing all the time, I'd really appreciate that. Because <laughs> when we're, we're vibrating at a low place, we attract experiences that are on a low level. We all know that to be true, I assume. I love looking at the vibrational scale of David Hawkins. He lays that out in his book, Power Versus Force. And the one Esther and Jerry Hicks lay out in their book, Ask and It Is Given. They're both very similar. And love, joy, and appreciation are all right at the top of the list. So if we are vibrating love and joy and appreciation, in other words, in a celebratory consciousness, then we attract high vibrational experiences. So remember, love points the way, and the law makes the way possible. So let me ask you this. What is your attitude when receiving a large bill in the mail? Like SRP, your electricity bill, your phone bill, What's your attitude about it? TikTok. Huh? TikTok. TikTok? TikTok. Oh, TikTok. 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 I assume that means, oh no, I can't afford this. How am I possibly going to pay this bill? Oh my God. Especially these days, my goodness. I filled my tank, it was $80. Yes. <laughs> and we've all learned this tendency. But that will not serve you. So instead, how about we say, I am so excited to see how God's going to work this out. <laughs> and then when you pay your bills, how do you feel? 
The most important thing is that when you pay your bills, you find a way, any way, to make yourself feel good. Never pay your bills when you don't feel good. <laughs> because you'll just bring bigger bills to you. <laughs> to change what you're feeling, you need to use your imagination to turn your bills into something that makes you feel better. What if you imagine they're not really bills at all, but instead you've decided to donate money to each company? <laughs> just out of the goodness of your heart because of the wonderful service that they provide to you and the world. How awesome it is to turn on the lights or flush the toilet in America, let me just say. That is such a gift. Air conditioning in Arizona. Air conditioning in Arizona. What a gift. Thank you so much. Let me give you some money for this. I so appreciate you. The biggest thing is to feel love when you pay your bills. When I went to Peru, boy did I appreciate our bathroom situation here. Yeah. I feel love every time I flush that toilet. <laughs> so feel love when you hand money over. Feel love with all your heart by imagining how much your money is helping the company and the staff who work for that company. Whenever you pay for anything, as you hand over your credit card, cash or check, imagine an abundance of money for the person you are handing it to, and mean it. Whatever you give out, you'll receive back. It's a law. When you receive your salary, be grateful for it so it multiplies. Most people don't even feel good when they are paid because they're so worried about how to make their salary last. They miss an incredible opportunity to give love every time they get paid. When money comes into your hands, no matter how little it is, be grateful. Remember, whatever you're grateful for multiplies. Gratitude is a great multiplier. Anytime you hear of another person receiving more money or success, get excited because it means you're on that same frequency. So be excited as if it were happening to you. Because your reaction to the news is everything. If you react with joy and excitement for the other person, you're saying yes. Yes to more money and success for yourself. And as we said, when your life increases, it ripples out into the world. It's so needed right now. If you react by feeling disappointed or envious that it's not happening to you, your bad feelings are saying no to more money and success for yourself. Is that such a stretch to believe? But we don't think about it very often. All of these ideas were by the uh, book, The Power, by Rhonda Bryn. I want to bring our wonderful sweet time together today to close by sharing the wealth, by sharing the optimist creed by Christian Larson, modified by Rhonda Bryn, and then a little more by me. I promise myself to be so strong that nothing can disturb my peace of mind. To talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person I meet. To make all my friends feel there is something worthwhile in them. I look at the sunny side of everything and make my optimism come true to think only of the best, to work only for the best. And I do. And to expect only the best. To be just as enthusiastic about the success of others as I am about my own. 
to forget about the mistakes of the past and to press on to the great achievements of the future, to wear a cheerful expression at all times and to give a smile to every living creature I meet, to give so much time to improving myself that I have no time to criticize others, to be too large for worry, too noble for anger, and too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble. To think well of myself and proclaim this fact to the world, not in loud words, but in great deeds. To live in faith that the whole world is on my side, so long as I am true to the Every day. Yes. yes. <laughs> and now, we will have our offering, of which we don't pass the basket anymore. But we do have a basket on the table over there where all the name tags are that you can drop your offering off um, before you leave today. We are so grateful. As a reminder, the offering is about exchanging our energy. And when we give to a place where we receive our spiritual growth, it multiplies because we give in the spirit of gratitude. When you give in the spirit of gratitude, your money flourishes, it multiplies, it grows. If you give like, oh, because I have to, it doesn't grow, it doesn't go anywhere, the energy just is stagnant. So only give when you're in a spirit of love and joy. Maybe y'all should come up and sing another song. <laughs> Just yeah. kidding. So we will sing. Um, but first we'll do our offering blessing. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I circulate. I am so blessed. Thank you, God. And now let's sing her. Karen Drucker's song, I Am So Blessed.
gifts in mind, let's say, um, gratitude, blessing together. We give thanks for these many blessings of today, and know they are a symbol of the inexhaustible substance of the universe. I give thanks that ten times as much is now on its way to me, and quickly manifests in perfect ways. Thank you, God. Yes, you And now for our announcements. Our prayer partner today is Reverend Tony Corrigan. She will meet you in the back here if you would like personal prayer with her. Um, Betty's not here today. I'm not sure if I have any information about the Explorers. So we'll, we'll check back in next week. Um, the sign-up sheets, thank you everyone for filling up. We're pretty much full for April's duties. I really appreciate it. But you can sign up for May. <laughs> and then we have our Reiki meeting every Tuesday at 9.30 and our um, prayer team meeting every Wednesday at 10 a.m. If you want to get plugged in, reach out. Um, Lessons in Truth book study is next Sunday, April 3rd, and Reverend Tony will be leading that. I will be on vacation next week. I'm going to Branson, Missouri, and so the uh, speaker in the house next week is Miss Cerise Patron. And our musicians will be Point of Light again. And yeah, I want to say thank you to everyone that made this service possible. Thank you for uh, Rob and for Julia setting up. And uh, Point of Light, Cerise, you guys were fabulous as always. Thank you so much for blessing us with your presence. And, and Mark, of course, we're, wow, thank you. <laughs> and so now we have a, that opportunity to stand and to dance and celebrate who we are today. One more time, point of light. And then of course we'll close with prayer for protection.
Yeah.